which I want to mention. Rav Shlomo Zalman, Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach, has a number of svarim. And one of the svarim is called Alicha Shlomo. So he brings the following idea, which I think is very, very pertinent to what's going on. He said, one of the problems that we have is davening by rote. It's just so become so monotonous and so boring. And I would say, especially now, when it's, you know, a situation where we're davening on our own, and some of us, it's true, are davening with minyanim outside in certain regulations, wherever that's allowed. But even that, you're not davening in shul, with the mokim kavua, with the regular balit filler. Everything is different. So Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Zatzal brought the following marshal, a beautiful marshal. He says there was a king, because every marshal has to start with a king, right? Who loved music, and he instructed his musicians to gather together, and every morning they should play for him the most beautiful music. And these musicians, they loved their king, they respected their king, and they really valued the opportunity of playing in front of the king. And they played every morning with enthusiasm, it was geschmack, what an opportunity we have to play in front of the king. Eventually, years went by, the musicians passed away, and their children took over this very Choshiva position. But they hadn't mastered properly the musical techniques that their father had in such a tremendous way. They didn't keep the instruments properly tuned, and they didn't love the king and grow up with the king in the same way that their father had before them for so many years. So to these young musicians, it was a custom. Yeah, that's what we have to do. Our father did it. We do it. We arrive at the palace every morning, daily performance. We open up our violin and our drum and our piano, whatever it is that we do, and we perform. It, the music sounded so bad that the king said eventually, do me a favor, please stop. Some of these sons began to develop a renewed love and respect for the king. And they understood why the king said, it's enough, I'm stopping listening. And they were determined to relearn their father's forgotten art. And every morning, before going out to the palace, they tune their instruments and they practice at home to improve their skills. And the king was very, very pleased with their efforts, even though they haven't yet fully regained their father's talents and skills, but they were trying their best to get to their abilities and therefore they, they gave the king a tremendous amount of simcha and, and he was so happy by that. Says Rabbi Shleim Zalman, we give the king, the Rabbi Nishalolam, so much joy. But when we come to the stage where davening for us is just something that we have to do. It's something that our parents did, our grandparents did. So we'll also do the same thing. There's so much to learn about davening. There's so much more that we can fine tune our incredible koyach of, 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 of tefillah, koyach of our mouths in an incredible way. It's unbelievable. Um, I'll tell you a couple of, again, I'm just going to share with you a couple of ideas that we have over here, what it is. Um, the Shemi Shmuel brings, the Heidegger Sochachava, he brings, which I found in many other places as well, that we know this from Chazal, that tefillah is the bow. The more you pull it, Rosh Pink has discussed this by Rikas, the more you pull the bow, the greater the force is. And therefore, the more kavona that you try to instill within your davening, the more possibility that your tefillah will have more kavona in that way. Rabbi Chanuk Henech of Alexandria once said, he writes this in the Sefer Asher B'Tefillah, he says that the British speak English, the French speak French, and the Russians speak Russian. He said the heart has its own language. Avoidish Shabalev, the Gemara in Tainis says, Ezu Tfila, Avoidish Shabalev, that the heart has its own language, and that is Tfila. And that is an unbelievable thing. And the Chazanish said, Chazanish said in the letters, in one of the first letters he wrote, and he said that any way you arrange it is a Gvaldik as long as it flows from the heart. As long as your Tfilah flows from the heart, then it will be accepted by the Rabboni Shalom. And it's an unbelievable thing, unbelievable Koyach that we have, but we have to utilize the Koyach. And we have to spend time on realizing what it is. And the truth of the matter is, again, even though we're not in Shul, and we don't have the opportunity to walk in our shuls wherever you are in the world, right? Even us in Eretz Yisrael, who are, you know, allowing to fill in a certain way outdoors, but all the shuls are closed. We're not allowed to enter our shuls, but our homes become our shuls. Our homes become the place that we daven, and we have to realize that the Rabbanu Shem listens to us wherever we are. And it's, you know, somebody actually 
somebody told me that he knows a certain Rebbe in America, I don't know exactly what school, what state, I have no idea, I don't think it really makes a difference, who was trying to give over the Hashivas of davening. And what he did was he picked up his cell phone and he started dialing a number. And they answered, he put it on loudspeaker. And the number answered and said, hello, the White House, can we help you? He had dialed the White House's number. I guess there's a number you can call to get through to the office of the White House. Anyway, so he says, um, yes, hi, my name is Rabbi, whatever it is. Can I please speak to this, the, the president? So the guy on the phone was like laughing, like, no, no, seriously, what are you? No, no, I'd like to speak to the president, please. He's like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Got to speak to the president. He's like, no, no, no it's really important. I, I just want two minutes, two minutes. That's all I need. I just want to speak to the president. He goes, no, 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 yeah, let me explain to you. you. Can't just speak to the president. You need an appointment. You need, you know, certain security backing. You can't just talk to the president of America. Well, who do you think you are? And he put down the phone. See, the, the, the Rebbe put down the phone. He says to his Talmudim, wow. We want to try and speak to the president of the United States, who's a human being. And in, in, in less than six months, he may no longer be president. We don't know. In, in four and a half years, for sure, he won't be president. You know, he's only here for a, a fleeting moment of time. But yet we can't speak to him. The Rabbi Nishalon, the Melech Malchei Amlochem, who created the world, who created us, who gives us everything in the world, who's constantly looking to see everything he created in the world. That's unbelievable. And yet we can speak to him and talk to him wherever we are, whatever we do. That's incredible. That means in the corners of our bedrooms, in the corners of our dining rooms, on our pesets, on the porch, on the, on, on the garden outside, wherever it is. The Rabbi Nishalonim is always listening to us. There's a Moedika Maisev on the Kotzka. The Kotzka said that any time you spend sharpening the axe is just as important as the time spent chopping the tree. Said the Heilige Kotzka that if you daven without preparation, that's not real tefillah. It's like chopping a tree with a blunt knife. You may say, I don't have time. I have got no patience. I don't have time. But said the Kotzka, just like when you chop down a tree, if you want it to be successful, you have to sharpen the knife, the axe. So too, the same thing with tefillah. They have to sharpen the axe. In other words, the tefillah is in your mouth in order to make sure that <coughs> the tefillahs go in that case. The... Um, the Medrash, the Medrash compares the results of tefillah, of real tefillah, to a prince that's digging a tunnel to his father from the palace exterior. We've got the king digging towards him and he's digging from the outside. He says digging in Aramaic is called Asira, right, which Asira is one of the languages of tefillah. This is the way that we approach the Rabboni and We throw our souls by doing the groundwork. We try and dig ourselves a hole to try and do something, says the Medrash. That's a beautiful understanding of Tefillah. The Slonim Rebbe and the Siva Sholem explains davening to planting. How does it work? First you plant, you plow the field, you sort of, you know, uproot the ground to make it soft. And then you put the seed in and then you water it. And only then can it sprout. Says the Eilig Slonim Rebbe and Beis Avram. First, we hollow out an opening in our heart. We make it that we want to talk to the Rabbi Nishalayim. Then we seed the words of prayer. We put them in. And then we pour the tears of our hearts so that eventually, whatever we want, it's able to come forth. And our Rabbi Nishalayim will give us whatever we want, which is an also an amazing opportunity. There was a Talmud of the Chovetz Chaim that he saw a young child was begging something from his father. Oh, this child was begging, Daddy, please, please, I beg of you, just give me this thing. And this Talmud said to the Chavetz Chaim, I see now that's how the Chavetz Chaim davens. That he spoke to the Rabbi Nishalolim as if he was talking to someone. You remember the Meister I told you of a Yid that was standing by the Koisal Maravi. It was a Sephardi Yid. He's standing by the Koisal Maravi. And... He was talking to the Rabbi Nishlan. He was telling over Hashem his day. Can you imagine? He was telling Hashem, well, today I did this, and today I did this, and I went there, and I came here. And, he was and at one point, he started saying something. He said, oh, no, no, I already told you that. That's incredible, because that means he was, conversa he's co he was conversing with the Rabbi Nishlan. And that was the Talmud said, that's what I saw for the Chavetz Chaim when he said Shema Kaleinu. He was talking to Hashem. There was a conversation going on. It's an incredible, incredible thing. Um, Shlomo Zalman was once asked what 
what, what, what takana did he make for himself before Rosh Hashanah? And he said, my takana was, the first three brachas of Shemina Esra should be with Kavana. That's it. Rosh Hashanah is Alman, the God Ladar. Could you imagine? That's what it is. Now, I want to tell you as well the amazing thing, a couple of things. The, the Rambam says two, uh, two things, two alochas when it comes to uh, tefillah, when it comes to Kavana. He says, in Perik Dalad and Hilchot Tefillah, he says that if you daven Shemin Esra without Kavona, you are not Makai in the midst of davening. But in Perik Yud, he says that as long as you focus on the very first bracha, then you have been Makai in the of Shemin Esra. Ah, I steal in the Rambam. So if you have a steal in the Rambam, what do you do? You open up a Heilig of Chaim, and Reb Chaim answers the steal in the Rambam. And he says, no, there's no steal. There are two Chilukim, right? Two Mahalchim, like famous in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Briska Mahalach. Said Rav Chaim, there are two types of kavana. The first type of kavana is to know the meaning of the words. And the second one is understanding who you're standing in front of them. The first type of kavana, the words, it's enough for the first bracha. The second type of kavana you need for the entire tefillah. That's what it is. It's very, very important. The Mejitzah once said, why is it that when we daven, all of a sudden we think about what we're eating for breakfast, for lunch, and for supper? We think about what we're going to do today. All of a sudden, every thought in the world comes in the middle, making it so difficult for us to daven with real kavana. And he says it's even harder. The more you try to daven, the more distracting thoughts you have. The measured Samagid brought him a, uh, a marshal to explain. He said, imagine a person has... A son who's very, 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 very bright. He learns well, gives him a tremendous amount of nachas, tremendous. So he says he'll take advantage of this source of pleasure by having, you know, by any any Talmud Chacham that comes to his house, he'll say, ooh, talk to my son. Right? The more harder the question, the more confusing the question, the more hush of the father will be, right? Because no, that was, ooh, that was a really hard question and my son still managed. Ooh, that was a really confusing one. My son still managed. Right? As long as he knows it's fine. Said the measure to Magit, in Yosha MS, the same thing was also the harder you try to daven, the harder the Eight Sahara tries to distract you. And whenever you can try and manage, and whenever you can try and overcome Yates are in this way and continue to daven, that's how pleased the Rabbi Shalom is. And you should know, I remember seeing in the writings of Rav Tsimaya, which Simaya brings down that sometimes a person opens the Siddha and you feel like a schmuck. Ah, wow, the, 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 the davening just went. The Shmanesu, the Krishma, the Birchus Krishma, Alenu Shemeach, the Ashrei. It was beautiful. And sometimes it, it just didn't go. Like I'm saying the words, I, I feel like a rock. It just doesn't go. What am I meant to do? He said, That's your avoider right now. Your avoider right now, even if it's difficult, even if it's hard. And I think that's what we have to understand now as well. Davening is taken on a very different type of understanding in our lives right now. It doesn't make a difference where you are, but wherever the, whatever it is, the more you try, the more you try to overcome, the more the Rabboni Shalom will have nachas from your tefillah and will accept it in any way, shape or form.